Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I have the Nike Cosmic Unity 2. And these are some of the biggest pros and cons of these and some things you need to watch out for if you are gonna be playing in these full time. Right. Now I'm sure you know the Cosmic Unities are one of Nike's sustainability line shoes. It's made of 20% recycled products. Now you can see that pretty evidently in the uppers here. If you look here under the microscope, even kind of on the toe cap guard, you can see it's kind of got these little different speckled pieces of rubber and plastic, and that's probably from recycled shoes. And then when you go into the yarns of the uppers, this is actually where the Cosmic Unity 2, I think has a better build quality than most other Nikes out there right now, and that it is two layers of true yarn woven on top of each other in parallel and in perpendicular strands. So you are getting really good lockdown in the uppers. I, I found that the uppers on the Cosmic Unity 2, number one, were some of the most expandable. So even though they are a little bit of a narrower shoe, they do become pretty buttery over time. And the lockdown on them is really good because the uppers are just a stronger weave. They just use kind of more yarn in the uppers. So when you tie them down, they do tie down a little better than some other shoes. But there are some caveats to that as well. Once we get into other areas of the shoe. And the other thing I liked more than a lot of other Nike shoes, surprisingly, was the tongue and lace closure system. The tongue is a double padded layer that is vented along its entire length, so it actually breathes pretty good for a shoe that is so bulky. Plus, the lace eyelets are technically outrigger eight lace eyelets, but they are stitched in to the bulk of the uppers. Plus, the super high backed heel counter back here really does just give you a pretty locked in solid feel. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper. Uh, even on the drag guard, I guess you could call it with the little specks of plastic, Dremel bites through that. And the yarns, no surprise, the Dremel bites through that too. However, because that yarn layer is double thick, it didn't get through to the inner layer of the shoe even, so that's pretty good. Um, you're gonna wear down the yarn and it's gonna look bad when you drag. However, because the uppers are just so thick, uh, the durability actually isn't horrible for a shoe like this that's mostly stitched. And getting into the midsole teardown, you you do get a full length zoom strobe unit, which does feel really plush. Now underneath that zoom strobe unit, you do just have what I believe is just recycled phylon. It does feel like Formula 23. That's what it feels like to touch. It feels like a more elastic type phylon to me, but I think that's just a product of the manufacturing process of it. Now above the foam, you do have a shank in these. However, it is just really thin plastic. I mean, you can just bend this thing all over the place. So it does get pretty flimsy in there. Good for accommodation, you know, it does make the shoe really flexible and feels more plush. You can kind of feel that zoom strobe unit more under your foot, but it also doesn't do much for performance either. Now, as you can see, that foam goes all the way underneath, all the way over, so it actually does create a panel over the upper of the shoe, giving a little bit more feeling of containment, uh, as well as around the heel counter here, because the heel counter as well, really, really thin and flimsy. You do have some protection here from more foam there, but remember, nothing is gonna substitute a rigid heel counter, not even really thick foam on the outside. And looking at the jump height test, only 37 centimeters on average. My first couple jumps were okay, because I was just yanking the shoe off the ground, but almost toward the end of that jump height test, they almost became a detriment to me, trying to yank that shank up and trying to yank that really flexible shoe up in the air. Um, it, any jump height I got was just from my own foot muscles and leg muscles. There was no rigid beam in there. There was no cantilever bending or any air tension that I could really use in these shoes to create any sort of rebound or reverb off the ground. And looking at the outsole tread, this is another one of these flowering patterns that kind of go multi-directional. You've got two contact points right here underneath the ball of your foot, underneath your first metatarsal and your fifth, and it kind of ripples out from there. Same thing on the heel, just kind of ripples out from these three points. Um, and this does produce decent traction. There's enough space in between the treads to give you really good grip. I found on an indoor court they didn't squeak or they didn't really come to a screeching halt but they did give like a really nice forgiving type grip i really had no issues with the grip because the pivot points were so large and because the tread is a little bit chunky it still gave a very decent grip especially on a painted outdoor court i found these to be equal to an indoor court as well and when i put this tread through its paces on the shuttle test it came in at 14.57 seconds which honestly isn't terrible and the tread does grip pretty well in that outdoor court like i said also these shoes aren't as heavy as you think they would be so they're not that hard hard to get through the air when you're running in a straight line. The problem comes with cornering. Um, they grip fine, but getting up and going isn't the easiest thing to do. But also speaking of their use on an outdoor court, if you look at the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, almost a millimeter of damage on a two millimeter tread depth. The durometer comes in at 13.8, which is a decently hard rubber compound. Um, I, I would expect these to start bottoming out on the edges a little bit faster than maybe some others because the tread depth can get variable on the edges.
edges. It goes all the way down to zero. It bottoms right out to the tread. So I would say if you're someone that plays up on the balls of your foot, has pretty good footwork, um, then you probably will not burn through these really quick. If you're someone that drags a lot on the inside of their foot, you can expect these to really start wearing down faster. So I think the durability on these kind of comes down to you. But getting into the fit, this was one of the more pleasantly surprising parts of the Cosmic Unity. As you can see them, I mean, they look super narrow and tapered in the forefoot. However, they kind of have more of a hot dog shape to them. They do taper hard in the forefoot. However, because the uppers are just a little bit more expandable, a little bit more forgiving, uh, even in my standard size and my two with foot, I did have cramping maybe for a day or two in these, but I was actually able to break these in in my standard size. And then I really didn't have many issues with them after that. I would say if you are a 2E, a little over a 2E, I probably just would go up the half size in these if you're going to buy them. And if you're somebody with a Bunyan or a Taylor's Bunyan, I probably would just look somewhere else because of that taper. Just probably won't accommodate that very much. Um, if you're somebody with a really flat and wide foot, probably also would look somewhere else because the shank just doesn't give really any support. And getting in the all-important playability of these and honestly my biggest warning or caution to you if you are planning on buying these I, in my opinion these just are not meant for super aggressive footwork they're not meant to take a ton of body weight coming in a vertical direction I noted with me when I was trying to put all my body weight on one foot several times these actually buckled under my foot uh, I found my knee kind of really got a little bit of a tweak there uh, the one time when I was playing on hardwood especially because the hardwood's a little softer right the shoes are a little softer so unlike like something like the Jordan 37, which because it's a stiffer setup, you get better performance when you go on the hardwood. On these, I felt like the performance started going down. I actually liked playing with them on harder surfaces, even something like a rubberized court, uh, like a sport court or outdoors. I felt it just was a little bit better, um, but not much. You just don't get really any pop out of these. So if you're someone that likes more of like a minimalist shoe feel, if you're one of those players in the comments section always asking like, what is the shoe that feels like more like a minimalist shoe? Uh, this is going to be it. There's not a lot of support down there. Now you can throw an orthotic in these because the heel counter is so high you still will lock down fine them and that will improve things a little bit. Now that's not because it's 20% recycled. It has nothing to do with that. Adidas makes recycled shoes all the time and in my opinion they're better than their standard counterparts especially in the tennis line. So it has nothing to do with that. I think it's just that Nike is making these more as like more of a plush comfortable shoe and they are. And I think for a shoot around shoe if you're going out and just shooting free throws just looking for something comfortable under your foot that this is fine. I think they're really good. I actually liked wearing these to work, just wearing these kind of kicking around more than a lot of other shoes. It was just anytime I tried to put a ton of force through this shoe is when I just noticed, unlike other shoes I've tested recently, uh, they just give nothing back. And if anything, I think they were kind of a detriment to me. So I think if you're someone that kind of stays on the ground a lot, uses shifty footwork uh, in a contained area, wants a lot of containment in the uppers and doesn't mind a low to the ground feel without a real stiff bottom and without a lot of support, you'll probably like these. If you want something more performance-based, you'll probably want to look elsewhere. But I'd love to know, are you someone that likes more that minimal feeling under the shank of the shoe, something that allows you to feel the ground better and something that's not going to give you a lot in return? I'd love to know your comments down below because like I said, I have heard a lot of comments on people wanting more minimalist basketball shoes. So I'd love to know if you're actually still going for these. Just let me know down below. And if you want to see the other brand new Nike shoe that just released, which is the polar opposite to the Cosmic Unity 2, the LeBron 20, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next one.